Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Kilbin is the name, and Hearthstone is the game, and this is a deck spotlight on an elemental hand buff paladin that was created by the professional player Savitz. So Paladin's been in a pretty rough spot all throughout the previous expansion, and even in Journey to Enguro, it hasn't exactly carved out a home for itself yet because the quest does not seem particularly good at defining a strong competitive deck. But Savitz here has created a nice little spin on Paladin that essentially merges one of the uh, mechanics of the previous expansion, Mitri's of Gadgetzan, which is hand buff cards, with a new mechanic, which is the elemental tribe and all the elemental uh, shenanigans and synergies that go on with those cards. So there's essentially two pieces to the puzzle here, and they actually work together fairly nicely because with cards like Firefly, this is a really cheap little elemental that adds another elemental to your hand. The idea being that if you have a lot of low-cost elementals, you can ensure that you get them out uh, on time, basically slot them into your curves so that you can set up an elemental synergy play on the following turn. But that has a nice side effect in a hand buff deck because with cards like Firefly, you're essentially adding all these little small guys to your hand, and when you play them as a 1-2, they just sort of feel like fodder for the board. They don't really do anything significant. But suddenly in a hand buff deck, uh, there's times where you have those sitting in your hand and they catch a hand buff or two. Suddenly they're two threes, three fours, and a one mana three four can make a much bigger impact on the board. Not to mention that there are instances in a lot of hand buff decks where you top deck a hand buff card really late in the game and perhaps your hand is a little bit emptier. So you only get, you know, maybe two to three buffs out of your hand buff card. With a deck like this where you're constantly refilling your uh, hand with additional little minions with Firefly, Igneous Elemental, etc. Even Servant of Kalamos is adding some minions back to your hand. When you top deck Grime Street Outfitter in the late game, there's a higher likelihood that you're going to have multiple minions in your hand to actually receive the buff, making these cards better than they used to be when top decked in the late game. So that's another way these packages sort of work together. Outside of that, this deck in general, as you can probably tell from the curve, plays pretty much like a mid-range style deck, as you might expect from a hand buff deck. There are certainly some more control-oriented cards with Tyrion, Ragnaros Lightlord, arguably even Blazecaller. Elise is a bit of a control card too, really, because she's all about uh, late-game depth of resources, and she can add a lot of resources to your hand. But uh, there's an interesting inclusion here, which is him at Jungle Hunter, which makes a lot of sense in mid-range decks, because essentially with mid-range decks, you do take some risk of drawing into fairly weak cards in the late game when you really need to get bigger, meatier stuff to contest uh, an opponent who is presumably also more late game oriented, because that's why you're in a late game scenario against them. So him, it helps you thin through your deck, tossing out some of this junk. So this is yet another way that if you're not expecting to get a lot of value off Smuggler's Run, it would be a really bad top deck. You can just filter it out of your deck completely with Hemet. He will take his gun and he'll shoot it and destroy it. And then you're more likely to top deck Rack, Tyrion, Blazecaller, Elise, etc. So cards that are, are going to make a more impact, uh, more impactful presence with any given draw. So Hemet uh, functions pretty interestingly in this deck as well. That said, as far as the elemental package, I should talk about that just a little bit. Of course, there are a handful of different elemental cards. Firefly and Igneous Elemental are more about generating minions than they are about doing something specific as a minion. Uh, Tar Creeper, though, great anti-aggro kind of card. Uh, just a really efficient 3-drop. You've got the Tolvir Stone Shaper, the same kind of thing, but still a significant body on turn 4. They can make some good trades and become a uh, friction point for your opponents. Uh, you've also got the Servant of Calamos here. Just a solid body that adds additional resources to your hands. And you can get some good elementals off this. You can chain Servant of Calamos for a very long time and just getting additional minions without ever actually running out of cards. But uh, there's some other big hits as well. For instance, you could get a second Ragnaros Lightlord off of Servant of Calamos, giving you a big body and additional heals so that thing can do some work. And then Blaze Callers, of course, are probably the crowning piece of any elemental deck. Just that giant body that's a huge board swing because you can both kill something from your opponents and develop your own minions. So these are uh, very powerful plays. And all that's capped off with some staple Paladin power cards like Tyrion, even Wicker Flame, Burn Bristle, True Silver Champion, all of which provide you with additional defensive utility, 
Uh, some aggression, actually, with True Silver and Tyrion, so that you can sometimes kill your opponent and finish off games if your minions aren't doing quite enough. But also some heal, really, with True Silver and uh, Wicker Flame. So this deck has enough uh, heal and survivability to uh, counter aggressive decks. It's even got a Galaka Crawler teched in for pirates. Uh, the one card I don't understand completely here is Hydrologist. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what Savitz's logic was on including this card. It is just a low-cost thing. There are a couple really good secrets, so it's by no means a terrible card. I don't know that it fits exactly what the deck is trying to accomplish necessarily, but um, it might just be one of those things where it's a new Journey to a Girl card. It looks fun, so let's run it in our deck because it's not necessarily a bad card. So all that said... Um, this looks like a really cool deck, and I've seen Savitz play it, and he's done really well with it. So I want to try this out as well. So let's go ahead and take the Elemental Hand Buff Paladin by Savitz out onto the uh, ranked ladder. Um, and uh, it's curious what it's going to look like and what we're going to run into. Paladin, again, has not been a popular deck or class. Uh, so people are going to be surprised probably at what they see. Not going to know what to expect. I suspect we're playing a Silence Priest here. That seems to be the most dominant archetype of Priest at the moment. It's going to do some some crazy funny stuff we have to keep an eye on. Might be forced to deal with some minions before we really feel like it's necessary. Just to prevent big combos and stuff. Uh, we do have like Aldor Peacekeepers to help a little bit. But those aren't fantastic against uh, a Divine Spirit Inner Fire combo if they're able to establish it first. And kill us before we ever get the chance to react, right? So, we can't preemptively Aldor Peacekeeper in this deck. In other words, it doesn't accomplish a lot. Okay, so, we mulliganed away some big stuff. Got some good cards potentially back in hand. These can start kicking off the... Uh, oh, this is just an Awaken the Maker's Priest. Okay, so not a Shenanigans Priest, as I'll call it. Uh, this is fine, just to get things rolling. These are all going to be fairly big minions. Uh, hopefully we draw another minion here to just keep rolling off the buffs. I, I think that's fine. Devil Sore Egg. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do this. I mean, I know that we can maybe get a bigger hand with some Fireflies and stuff, but a 3-3 at this point is actually somewhat valuable already. Uh, we're not going to likely get this Calamos out soon, though, but look how big these minions are already. Oh, my God. Uh, normally, him on turn 6 might feel fairly bad. Uh, simply because he's a 6-6 six, six and it's not that exciting. It's kind of a worse Boulder Fist Ogre, right? But when he's also a 9-9, nine, nine, or he's a 9-9 nine, nine instead, suddenly that feels uh, considerably better. This is a really cool play with Mirage Color, like a lot. It basically activates your Devil Sword Egg that otherwise wouldn't be activatable. Although, you, I don't know if he has another way to activate this one. He might run some taunts and stuff in this deck. Clearly a 3-mana 5-5 five, five is a strong play. Oh, I don't like that trade unless something else is about to happen, because I think that gives me the means to um, kill it with my 1-1 and my weapon. Might have been an awkward thing for him. I might just play this Kalamos down as a, as a big body, because we obviously haven't developed an elemental to get the synergy here, but I, I just want to make a big play on the board. Did, did this go through successfully? I guess it did. He, he figured out our card. Okay. Uh, we can just trade, trade, and play the 7-8. This is obviously susceptible to Shadow or Death, but at least that will consume a, a fairly large portion of his, his turn. And uh, him at coming down next turn actually feels pretty good again, I think. Because it's a 9-9, it's a and uh, it's going to thin out our deck really nicely. This might even be the best possible 3-drop that we would have wanted that uh, him it would have cut out. So it's cool that we got this in hand right before that was relevant. That's funny. But I, I don't know, I think we're in an okay spot. Like, obviously he's getting close to his quest, but we're not really that concerned about his quest at this point. It's a, oh, but that's a good, that's a good smuggler's run target. Thankfully he wasn't able to deal with this guy though, so we can kind of just go ham. Uh, we better play this now while we can. We can only send it on a future turn, but we don't have enough elemental activations to get this guy uh, some value. He's not perfect with the board, because he's got a 1-1 to pop the Divine Shield, but he actually... Theoretically can't kill it all that easily. And it helps protect our guy from trades a little bit too. So we might just be able to go ham here. I, I know that face damage is probably not super valuable. Because he's he's likely to get an Amara before long. But applying that pressure... Ooh, that's a good Shadow of Pain though. Applying that pressure though does kind of force him to think about it. And might make his turns a tad more awkward. So 
I think there's still some value in applying that pressure, especially when we didn't have anything else to do anyway, right? Um, unfortunately, not something we can activate. Maybe the turn after Raglite Lord. Again, I think we'll just hem it here. We've got to trade. He's going to be able to trade back, but... We still have a pretty solid board here. <laughs> a 9-9 and a 7-4 is not terrible. He can choose to kill uh, one or the other. I don't think he has enough right now that's visible to kill both. That's a minion. We don't know what this is. Could be Shadow or Death. That'd be pretty sad uh, since he only has two cards in hand. But he's likely able to proc Amara here. The question is, can he play her immediately? I don't know. He probably doesn't even need to necessarily. I actually hope he kind of goes for the Hemet with the 5-5 five, five, and the 4-3. Instead of just killing off the 7-4. Because that means I could I, I could potentially heal the Servant of Kalamos with Rag Light Lord, Which would be awesome. He might have trouble predicting this to some extent. Our deck doesn't have the most obvious selection of cards. But no, he nailed it twice. Ooh, Outlaw Peacekeeper, sick! That's good. That's lucky for him. Now he gets to trade with Impunity, essentially. So I kind of got what I wanted, but... Uh, oof. We can play that next turn. Um, yeah, I'll probably go ahead and make this value trade and, and hope that the Ragnaros hits here instead of my face. I mean, my face is not the worst target. He's got enough either way, no matter what I kill, to kill the Rag, so I might as well kill for the value and hope that Rag lands big. If not, this is going to get a pretty good trade back, but none of these minions are particularly more valuable than the others. But come on, Rag, you got it, buddy. No, Rag! <laughs> but at least we can Blaze Call our next turn. Hero power. He's going for the rag. He's got. Uh, he can clear. He can clear the board, but it costs his entire board. Oh, we'll be able to pop her off with Blaze Scholar. Pop her off. It's not exactly the right way to phrase that. We'll be able to kill that minion with this minion. Is what I should say. He still hasn't uh, activated his Amara just yet. Yeah, we gotta go this route. We can't go for the other two, even though they, they both work right now. It's, it, and they're both nine, nine mana total. I, this is the bigger, better body. And uh, we can still do both these next turn, because we activated an elemental here. So I don't know. We're in an okay spot. I mean, we only have six cards left is the problem, right? Like, we destroyed a vast majority of our deck. Oh, that's a pretty good play for him. Wow. We destroyed a vast majority of our deck, which means um, we got to kind of try to think about winning real soon. I guess we have to play these now. Tyrion can always come down later, but if we play Tyrion now, we can't activate these next turn. So there's a chance this sticks and allows me to just maybe kill him. Because he may not be able to kill this very effectively. Um, Ozruk next turn actually is going to be halfway decent, I think, right? We played two elementals, so he's going to be a 5-15. Rag Light Lord's also fairly good, especially if we can make it heal this, but we don't know if that's going to be the case, so... I think I'm going to take the Osra and play it next turn, even over the Tyrion. But, uh, he's got to think about living at this point. Like, he can probably develop a Death Rattle and Damara this turn. Oh, God! Why? Crystalline Oracle is really good, I just realized, against him at Nessing Wary, because we also cut all the junk out of our deck. Which means that he he gets to just run through all of our stuff. Like, all the good stuff. He gets to pick only good stuff is all that's available. So, <laughs> Crystal and Oracle's only getting big drops, right? Um, so, we'll probably just go ahead and kill the Tyrion and, and develop the Azrak here. He's got Amara, so face damage is totally irrelevant at this point, which sucks. Um, we gotta kill this Tyrion, though. I don't have a way. I thought I played... Oh, Tolvir Stone Shaper is not actually an elemental, guys. Oh, oh. He's just a 510. We played two elemental synergy minions, but not two actual elementals. So, he's going to be able to get through that with this two piece combo, but he has Amara, so face damage is absolutely useless at this point. We're going to have to hit land a big Tyrion. It sucks that he, he got to play a Tyrion before we did. Like, that's really bad, but. Um, what can we do? He's going to take five, but Amara heals it off, so it doesn't matter. I, I don't... Oh. 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 Interesting. So, he even has an Azoth, uh, Tyrion. Uh, there's just no way for me to win this game at this point, guys. There's just absolutely zero routes to victory. 
Oh. Doesn't even need Amaro. We'll just go ahead and already Nazoth. Pretty lucky to have Nazoth in the first half. Not not lucky, I guess, but um, beneficial for him, certainly, that he had Nazoth in the first half. We're just out of gas, guys. Out of gas. Could not apply the pressure at the right times to find the win. That's interesting. I wonder why he did that. Oh, weapon trade. That's why. That's why. Or perhaps Tortolon trade with a spell-powered consecration. I, I don't even... It's not the priest cards that have beaten me here, guys. It is 100% the paladin cards. Double Tyrion. Consecration. Uh, I can't even beat my own cards, guys. This is not active. So we don't have any outs here. We'll um, just concede. Play some cards and concede, boys. Oh, that was rough. So him, it was definitely um, beneficial in some regards, but kind of denied us some outs and actually really improved the uh, consistency of our opponent's uh, gimmicks. Uh, I shouldn't call them gimmicks, but our opponent's uh, strategy with crystalline oracles and so on. So that's pretty tough. We're going to have trouble going toe-to-toe -to -toe with that forever, but things didn't line up quite as nicely as we would have liked. Um, okay, we'll keep these two kind of taunty guys. They could be very helpful for applying uh, some pressure and shutting down quest rogue stuff. Two smugglers runs is intriguing because this is going to be a really big tar creeper, but I don't know that it's going to be fast enough. We'll go ahead and do it because we've got the mana. But this, uh, you know, the the only downside with tar creepers with a quest rogue, I think you need to kill them, not just sit back and play defensively. And uh, of course, they don't have a lot of attack when you're trying to kill them, so it backfires a little bit. It's going to still be a 3-7 and a 6-7 on his turn, but it's going to take him a while to get through it and apply some damage. But once he has all 5-5s, five it's, it's probably not going to matter a ton. Uh, I don't think we need to coin. We can just uh, play the Tar Creeper next turn, save the coin maybe for an Elise on, on 4. I don't know. Igneous Elemental is not even bad now that it's a 3-4. I wish we had a way to actively kill these instead of just leaving them on the board. But he's, he's going to be able to do some cool stuff. That's not likely to help him a lot, I think. Oh, I would absolutely coin a Consecration right now if we had it, just to remove these from play. <gasps> oh! Because <laughs> now he can't pull them back. He left them out there without pulling them back, so now he does not have any more Swashburglers. He's at zero out of four, effectively. Um, which I think gives me a pretty big advantage. We kind of wasted our Stone Shaper Taunt a little bit, but... Oh, this is an interesting version of the deck. Wow. I'm just going to play this as a 5-7 minion. Um, the taunt is not super relevant to me. I want to stay on curve as much as possible. And uh, we can, like, you know, play Elise next turn. The taunt is not going to matter. I just want to kill the guy. I want to push damage. So, I don't know. He's going to have trouble activating his quest now, I feel like. Uh, we put him pretty far behind. He's he's played a lot of stuff without actually, without actually um, accomplishing his primary directive, which is the caverns below. Although this is a different list than I'm familiar with, it's running some interesting stuff. A lot of which you know doesn't actually help his quest goals much. That's all right. He took five damage, killed a, a valuable minion. We're gonna develop a seven seven here. I don't like that he's getting tons of Shaku value, but what can I do? The pack's probably not going to matter. Just wanted to play the biggest body possible on curve. Next turn we can double three drop. It's going to be fairly, uh, fairly impactful. I'm hoping he can't kill this and we can just punch seven. Everybody's playing my Ev. Poor Valera. Totally got cut out of the game. Uh, he's going to kill it, I think. Whoa, that's risky. It's not even likely to kill it, actually. It's more likely... Oh, but he has the trade, too. Oh, he should have traded first, probably. If he he kind of wasted some damage, but probably not significant. He just wanted to see what happened, which can't blame him there. So let's just play more big dudes. 
Kalamos into Hydrologist next turn will be pretty solid too. A 3-7 attacking face is much better than a 1-5 attacking face, so I like the way this works with the hand buff stuff. Oh, goodness. That's kind of scary with all the low-cost cards he has. Wow, I don't know what I'm actually playing. I don't know why he runs the quest if everything is not a quest deck. This feels more like just a, a kind of amalgam deck, which is fine. It's cool. Uh, just very surprising to me. Uh, so I think I have a little bit more time than I originally suspected, because I don't think he's going all in on the quest. Probably going to actually kill the Shaku to deny value instead of hitting uh, hitting face. Uh, when a friendly minion dies, return it to life with one health. That's not super valuable. Eye for an eye is not going to be valuable. I think we'll actually just take the uh, the getaway Kodo here. Wicker Flame is actually pretty good with Redemption, I guess. Tyrion is really good with Redemption. Maybe we take Redemption and we hope for a Tyrion to stick. That's about the only thing. Wicker Flame would be halfway solid. But Getaway Kodo was really good with all three of these minions. Not that they're necessarily going to... I'm just going to do the Getaway Kodo. I think it's the most consistent of the options. Redemption, I don't really care about getting the Wicker Flame back. I'd rather get more Discover cards back or Value cards back. Oh my goodness. This is turning into a weird. I don't, I don't know what I'm playing against quite yet. It's like a Miracle Rogue almost. Well, it is kind of a Miracle Rogue, but also with the quest, it's like he just jammed in everything. It's very unusual. Fortunately, I don't know if I can kill that auctioneer. I don't, in fact, I don't think I can. I think we'll just play Rag and uh, trade. I can't get to 5 damage with my hand. Let's play the biggest guy. Heal up a little. I just don't think he's going to activate this quest. I don't know. At least not anytime soon. I'm just curious what's in his deck. The consistency has to be weird with, with the quest activation stuff. Oh boy, it's starting as a 4-4. Four -four. That's real scary. And he has a ton of secrets. Oh boy. So this is literally just Miracle Rogue with a quest. Maybe he just runs the quest to um, fool opponents into playing wrong. <laughs> that would be pretty interesting. I like the idea of that. <sighs> oh my goodness. This is real scary, guys. Even, um, even Eldor Peacekeeper doesn't really help because it's just going to continue growing, right? So, Rag just died. I don't think we have an out here. I think we're dead. We have no way to deal with this stuff. Another rag doesn't really help. It's obviously going to be able to kill it with the... <laughs> that hurts even more. We, we could have uh, flame elemental to test that, but I wanted to be able to develop the getaway Kodo, so... We're just... It doesn't matter. The game is over. Our only chance is him fatiguing himself somehow. So yeah, this is just Miracle Road. We might be able to taunt to stay alive a little bit. Miracle Road with, I guess, elementals to activate the quest is the goal. Sounds like it to me. Um, we actually, it probably wastes the, uh, the defender here, really, but I think we're just dead no matter what. The math might work out in our favor a little bit. I'm not sure. Uh, he can do seven weapon clear. Yeah, he's got more than enough. Amazing. He might even be able to activate the quest soon off those. Uh, he actually only has two, perhaps, at this point. Either way, the game is, is very clearly over. I haven't actually seen shares in seed yet. That's pretty cool. I like the little leaves. He's got two. Oh boy. Just gets better and better, guys. Oh 
Whew, that was tough. Yeah, I mean, this deck so far doesn't feel great to me, I gotta be honest. It um, feels a tad awkward. Drawing things a little bit out of order, just not getting enough early game pressure. That was a deck that we probably incorrectly played against. I have yet to see the Miracle Rogue with the quest added in. It's an interesting amalgam, hybrid. Okay, so here we've got a mage. Might be a uh, Waygate mage. I've also personally been playing an aggro mage. It's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, we'll keep the one elemental here just to see if it can kick things off. Pretty slow hand, unfortunately. Pretty slow hand. With all our early game drops. Th that is especially not the hand we want to see, you guys. Kind of sucks. Man. It's way, way too slow, probably, for what we're trying to play against. Yeah. So, I mean, we need to kill this guy. We don't want to sit around all day waiting for these big threats to develop. Because he may eventually just draw into the Exodia combo and kill me regardless of the heal, regardless of the taunt. There's a lot of ways for him to just go win the game. And uh, that means we need to win the game first, right? We need to apply pressure, kill him, put him in awkward spots. So we have some, like, you know, ways to do that. Unfortunately, we just have not drawn them. Him giving me cards is probably going to help to some extent. Uh, I have to develop an elemental to activate that next turn. So we'll play the Tark Reaper and just trade. This is not, again, a minion that's great at applying pressure, unfortunately. We haven't drawn into any of the uh, anti-aggro tools that we need. Or, excuse me. We haven't hewed into any of the anti-aggro decks. I still haven't said this correctly. We have not queued in, into any of the aggro decks that we need for our anti-aggro tools like Tark Reaper to be effective. I thought that the rogue would be a little bit more aggressive. Coining the consecration really feels like a mistake in that game now that I think about it. Because ultimately... Uh, it wasn't at all about keeping his stuff off the board for the quest. It was about playing against um, Miracle. So Blaze Caller is going to be my choice here. Uh, obviously, Magma Ranger sucks. Rag, again, healing is not actually going to matter. He can kill me from 30. So applying the most pressure and damage from Blaze Caller here will be the most uh, beneficial outcome. I don't even think I need to kill that. I think I'm just going to go face for one. I don't think it's going to matter at all. I don't have an elemental to develop next turn other than the Firefly, so we'll probably have to play it to set up the Blaze Caller. So we'll have to find some arrangement of mana that works favorably in that regard. I'll probably Defender Firefly next turn and uh, hopefully get this to two. If he doesn't ping it this turn, if he pings it this turn, then... Uh, he puts us at 10 cards and we overdraw one, but it won't matter. We have everything we need. He developed the secret instead. So yeah, we'll just put this out of ping range um, and play the Firefly. It is actually now, though, sort of in ping range because it's, it's taunted. So that might have backfired a little bit. I'll trade here just to remove that. He, he'll be forced to ping now if he wants to. We might just go ahead and play this, too. There's a chance everything on the board gets uh, Frost Nova Doomsayer. I don't have a green answer for that, unfortunately. Maybe if that happens, I save this to develop uh, an elemental in a future turn. We can't play Tyrion into the Doomcaller just to get the weapon. That would that's too um, we're too early for that. Yeah, I'm not sure. We're we're potentially going to overdraw again thanks to this, but. Primordial Glyph is always scary. Such a good card as far as I'm concerned. Such a good card. Unless he got Frost Nova off that, I think that's per, that, that exact combo is off the table at this point. So, Just hanging out here. What's he going to do? Ping trade. Leaves us with, what, uh, six, eight, nine damage on board. We can do five with the Blaze Caller. 
Frost bolting face doomsayer? What, what's this gonna be? What's he frost bolting face? Just chunking me down for. Another primordial cliff. This was an interesting play to me. It obviously signals that he doesn't care about killing my minions, that he's planning to kill them some other way, which is intriguing. We still don't have an answer for a Doomsayer, unfortunately. Uh, so we'll just hammer face as hard as we can. If he doesn't deal with this mess now, he's going to die. Obviously, next turn, or ice, he has to ice block or something, you know. But uh, I might Tyrion into a Doom... A Doomsayer, honestly, just to get the weapon out. I'd only regret that if I top decked a True Silver. There's this Ice Block. But he's still very far from activating this. And he has a, a, probably a lot of pieces in hand. But Yeah, Blizzard sucks. It's hard to deal with. A lot of freezes. My hand is too full. That actually would have been a pretty solid card. I think I'll just Tyrion. Uh, I wish I could Tyrion Flame Elemental though, because the Blaze Caller is going to sit dead if I. Could Rag instead of Tyrion? Let me think. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I want a Tyrion to get 5 damage and potentially kill him next turn, and this is hard for him to deal with. Let's just do Tyrion. Can't really ever feel bad playing Tyrion. There might be a way to think through this. Um, Rag could have kept something alive against Flamestrike, maybe, for instance. But Blazecaller is good for doing damage over the top, which is uh, something a weapon can't always do. I know he's not running taunts, but... There might be an instance where if there's another ice barrier we don't want to activate. It's better to have this in hand because we don't have to actually attack face. It's very unlikely to make a difference which way we do it, but this theoretically still presents ice block poppage on board just like the blaze color does. So I think I like having this better in hand than, than otherwise. Frost Nova sucks. We can't, we can't answer it at all. That's not Frost Nova, though, so we're actually fine on that regard. We're not going to burn anything too valuable. True Silver's good, but it's less good with Tyrion on the board. So the question is, can we pop the, uh, can we pop the block and pop the Doomsayer? Yes, we can, in fact. So let's try to do exactly... Oh, it's awkward math, though. So we have 8 and 12, um, 10... Let's just go 8 to the Doomsayer, because it's going to work out that way regardless. It's it's going to be, yeah, it's the math. The math doesn't really make sense here, so it's... He's going to end up with, with um, two health left. This I think I've discovered the best way to do this here. This could be a uh, barrier. It's not. We'll go ahead and play the uh, rag here, just in case somehow the heal matters. It also activates the blaze caller for next turn to get us over the top if we need it. Um, there's a chance he like freezes and destroys my board, I understand, but he didn't do it last turn. It's not incredibly likely that he has the freeze now, and we still have a lot of ways to win the game, I think. So There's a chance it matters, right? We're going to get the weapon back, too, if he does that, so we're going to have multiple paths here to find... The damage necessary. Flame strike incoming? What's No, he wouldn't have flame strike traded that way. I don't know what's about that. We might just be getting comboed. It's possible to do it from here. If he can play four spells and do everything. I've seen it happen in similar scenarios to this. So for instance, there he just he activated one totally for free. He's digging to figure it out. I mean I don't know if he has enough mana left. There's the reflection for two. Is he going to get there? Oh my gosh, the other intellect. He might fatigue soon, though, is an actual concern. The reflection for one. That's the ice block. Maybe? Kabbalist Tome doesn't actually do it. A fifth. 
Sorcerer's Apprentice. My god, he's gonna get there. Wow. I think we just got comboed, guys. That's crazy. That is stupid crazy. We just got Exodian. If he has time... Oh, he doesn't need time. He just got a new turn. I thought he might not cast it in time. So stupid. What can I do? We can't... You can't play around that. Kill him faster is how you play around it. Ugh. He even got five. I've never even seen that. That's a new one. Ugh. Playing faster is literally the only way to beat this. And we just couldn't do it. We couldn't. I don't think we could find it. We popped the block as soon as I could see it uh, feasibly possible to do so. So couldn't swarm fast enough. Whew. Whew, that was a heck of a turn. Good on him for figuring it all out. It's kind of, at some point, you just start throwing down Torcher's Apprentices and casting spells and hoping something sticks, I guess. <laughs> like, there's, there's still some math to figure out with, can I squeeze it all in? But when you have that many Torcher's Apprentices on board, it's not hard to squeeze in spells. He got to cast Waygate totally for free, which is nuts. So, yeah, we'll try again, guys. We'll try again. I'm not feeling this deck just yet. I don't know. Maybe we're mulliganing incorrectly. Who knows? But it doesn't feel good just yet. I, I don't feel like we've had a matchup where we were favored, which signals a lot to me about what the deck is designed to do. Or maybe just a meta read that's not its not an adequate meta answer right now. This is an incredibly awkward hand. Part of me thinks this deck would be better without the hand buff stuff. I, I know I talked big how it all works together, but we haven't really seen that to an actual advantage just yet. See, how terrible is this smuggler's run right now? I kept the only minion in hand that we had in the mulligan, or the only one that was halfway early game oriented. So now we're just incredibly behind. And of course, shenanigans are afoot with Quest Rogue, so it's going to be real hard to win this game. Which I think is going to make this deck spotlight 0-4, which isn't a lot of fun for me. Sort of slow, I guess. Tar Creeper again, really bad in this scenario. No pressure. True Silver into the 5 drop is useless. We need another elemental to play. Our hand is just disastrous. Um, just nothing f feels good here. Uh, hopefully we draw a minion at least next turn. We could perhaps smugglers into Grime Street. Maybe hero power. Maybe it's a two drop like the uh, hydrologist I think is the name of the card. That's two. Drink with me, That's gonna be three. At least, might have the shadow step already. That'd be pretty bad for us, obviously. Yeah, that's, that, the game is already over, unfortunately. We have no, we just, we have to kill him before this stuff matters and uh, we're just not going to be able to do that. Uh, I might just go ahead and... No, the, the Grime Street needs to be buffed too. This is just another awkward turn where, you know, if we want to line up five mana, we can. But then this is a 1-1 one, one and we we waste the Smuggler's Run. Like, just nothing is working right. It's just not coming together correctly at all. So I didn't even develop an elemental. Like, just everything feels wrong so far. Huh, man.
I've been having a lot of fun with Journey 2 and Grow, but this deck is not bringing out the fun in me. It's uh, it's kind of discouraging me. Makes me sad, because I, I really like Hearthstone, but... Uh, these games have been rough. Felt like we were only in a position to ever contest one of them. Okay, we got a big charger coming out. No, that's awesome. Wow. <laughs> Have you ever seen a better coin than that? Jeez. Coin, let me just casually coin out two five fives. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, there's just no shot for me here. Other than just trying to go face and... It's just, it's just not in the cards, guys. Ugh. Once again, our cards are better for our opponents than for us. Why does that happen? It's crazy. We can kill one, but what good will it do? There's just going to be a thousand more coming. Um, uh, he's got 15 damage already showing, too. Like, there's just no... There's no result here that puts us in a position to win the game. What good's an 8-8 eight, eight when you can play one mana 5-5 five, five chargers, right? <laughs> oh, this is brutal. Now, that said, I actually don't think the quest rogue is a huge problem. In general, don't mistake my uh, my saltiness in this particular game as uh, an indictment on the deck archetype. I think there's a lot of ways to beat quest rogue. It's just that our deck doesn't have them. In fact, as far as I can tell, this deck doesn't have a lot of ways to beat anything. Uh, it just feels too disjointed to me. It's, uh, it's just... Hmm, I don't know. I thought it all made sense at the top level. I've seen Savits find some success with it, so maybe we just hit the wrong opponents at the wrong time. There's always variance. We don't play four games. Things can go poorly as they did. It just felt... It never felt smooth. And I always pretty aggressively mulliganed for early drops, too. It's not like we were being greedy with the keeps, you know... But we had some dead hands with some high-cost cards when we didn't need it. Uh, Hemet worked okay, but actually ended up supporting our opponent just because of the matchup. Just a lot of things went wrong. Just felt very awkward. So, I mean, I'm not going to say the deck is bad by any means. It was created by a much better player than me, and I've seen him win with it. It's just, I don't know that it's great. <laughs> I think there are probably better decks out there, and I think this probably suggests what a lot of people think, and that is that Paladin is just a little bit behind the curve right now when it comes to competitively viable decks, except for perhaps those that are really control-oriented and include Nazoth, which seems like it might be a thing, but this particular uh, hybrid of the last two sort of big mechanics from the last two expansions, as cool as it sounds on the surface, I'm not sure I absolutely loved it. At the very least, I don't think it fits my playstyle or um, fits the meta, at least today, at the very least. So, all that said, uh, sorry we couldn't win any games. I think we still got a good view of the deck. Happens from time to time. But if you guys have any thoughts, comments, or questions on this deck, what it's designed to do, I probably won't be able to answer them, but I'll be happy to read them. Uh, but until then, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, game on.